It's good to be here at Nancy's Creek United Methodist Church. It's uh, another wonderful and glorious day. It's a little rain outside, a little liquid sunshine, but that's okay because uh, we enjoy uh, just being here. God has gave us another day, and this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, the title of the sermon today is going to be The Same Boat. The same boat. We are all in the same boat. I don't know how you feel about it, but you might as well get used to the fact that we're all in the same boat. If it sinks, we all go down. If it rises, we all go up. But God is good for us. Hallelujah. I want to welcome all the ones that are here today and uh, at, at church and I want to welcome all the ones that's out on the internet and everything that watch us every Sunday. And I want you to see my grandson back here today as, as he's uh, leading everything. He's doing all of these different things to make us uh, be able to carry uh, this service out. And so we're doing that, and I'm glad that he is here to help us. Let's open with prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Skyler, give us our scripture, if you will, sir. Chapter 6. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit, and cried out. For they all saw him, and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them, and saith unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased. And they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure, and wondered, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. Word of God for the people of God. Hallelujah. We're all on the same boat. You know, Paul said, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things. He said, and I am instructed. Instructed. In other words, he's been taught how to abound and how to be abased. Oh, we're good at teaching the, the abound part, but we don't teach that much about how to be abased and how to fight things with the Word of God and stand on the Word of God. Just like Jesus walked on the sea and Peter wanted to come to him and he stepped out on the water and he stepped out on the Word of God. And we need to learn to walk on the Word of God. Philippians 4, 8 and 13 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. And we need to learn to think on these things instead of letting these trials and tribulation and trouble get us down. We need to learn how to walk in those things. He, he said in verse 11, I, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. So we need to learn to be content even when we're going 
through the storm. He said, I know both how to be abased, I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be filled or full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. So he's telling us right there that we're all going through some problems in our life, but we ne need to learn how to travel through those situations. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. We need to learn to walk in the word of God. And then in verse 13, he says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. We need to realize that God is with us wherever we go, whatever problem we're dealing with. If you notice in the scripture that we just had up here, Jesus was on the mountaintop and the disciples were going like he told them to from one side to the other side of the water. And he saw them having problems. He saw them toiling and having difficulty with the storm that they were facing. But it didn't say he ran out there and helped them out of the storm. He continued doing what he was doing, and then he went out and helped them. <clears throat> the Bible said when he stepped on the boat, the storm ceased. Amen. When we get Jesus involved in our life, we're going to see things change. I'm instructed. I'm instructed both to abound. We're good at teaching that. I'm also instructed how to suffer, how to have need, how to suffer through loneliness, frustration, and turmoil, and aggravation. We need to learn how to walk on the word of God through Amen. these things. Amen. He instructed me to suffer. Because we don't teach this in church now like we used to. Right now we teach if you come on in and be saved, you'll be riding in a Mercedes Benz in less than a month. You can name it, claim it, ride in it, and go anywhere because you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But I want you to know that it's going to rain on the just and the unjust alike. You're going to have problems, but you're going to have to learn to walk through them with God, walk through them with the Word. You'll be happily married. You, all your kids will graduate from school. Everything will fall into place, and you'll have no problems at all if you just accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But that's false teaching right there, glory be to God. You're going to have problems. You're going to have situations and circumstances that's going to try your patience. It's going to aggravate you. It's, you're going to be in turmoil, loneliness, frustration, and suffering through those things. But God said, I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the ends of the earth. I'm instructed both how to be full and I'm instructed how to be hungry. I ain't been hungry that much. We weren't rich growing up, but I've always pretty much had something to eat. Amen. If it wasn't but cornbread with butter in it and a little sorghum syrup, I, I had something to eat. God bless me. My mother would make me a little pan of biscuits. Glory be to God. I was blessed. God, God never said that you were not going through anything. I want to tell you that there are people that are hungry. Some are suffering and going through situations in their life, and they need someone to pray for them. 
If you're going through a problem and you're blaming God for everything you're going through, how are you going to pray for anyone else that's going through a problem and needs someone to lift them up? The Bible said, forgive if you have anything against anybody. Amen. I know it's difficult, or we try to make it difficult, but God said do it. He said if you don't forgive those who trespass against you, I will not forgive you. Amen. Some areas of our life need so much help. But we need to learn how to be content even in the storm. Amen. Not just enduring, but learn how to be content in it. Learn to enjoy our own company. You know, sometimes we just <clears throat> don't even like being with ourselves. Contentment in the storm. <clears throat> But contentment doesn't mean the absence of apathy. It doesn't mean that we're not going through anything. We're going through, but we need to be like God going through it and standing on his word. If you never read the word of God, if you never study the word of God, how are you going to stand on the word of God. Amen. What it means. It means that you make peace. With the process. You make peace. With the process. If it takes this. To get to the other side. Of the lake. Or the other side of the water. I can do it. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know that I've got everything I need to do it, but I've got God on my side. I'm going to make it through. I'm hurt. I'm suffering. There's something going on. I don't understand. I never should have been in this mess, but now that I'm here, I'm content. Amen. I'm going to get through it. To make peace with the process in the program that God has designed for your life. Sometimes we need a storm to move us in the right direction because we're so stubborn. I needed an amen on that, but nobody came in. I'll amen myself. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching better than y'all are hollering in here. Some of you have aspiration to be something more than you are. You must avoid temptation where possible and be positive even in a negative situation. The negative situation does not define you. Amen. Let me say that again. The negative situation does not define you. Storm or not, wind or not, good or bad, that doesn't define you. It's how you respond to those situations Amen. that define who you are. God is good. All the time. All the time. I am centered by myself and I'm content in myself. I'm content in God's ability to help me and to see me through. I have been stabilized in the Word of God. I am who I am. That's what God said. He said, I am. Tell him I am sent me. My situation is not defined by my circumstances. We are all in this together. Right. The boys are on the boat. I want you to look at the boat. Look at the battle. Look at the bread. The boat the battle, the bread. All throughout scripture, when he deems something valuable, he always puts it in a boat. Mm -hmm. Noah, he put Noah and his family in a boat 
for them to be able to survive what was coming. God always puts his treasure in the boat. Moses, when he was little, and they were trying to kill him, they put him in a boat. Amen. God wants you in the boat, but willing to fight and help those people that are in the boat with you going through problems. When Paul was traveling towards Rome and everybody was getting ready to leap out of the boat, he put it, God put things in order that he wanted to. You know, when Jesus was walking down the water and uh, down the shoreline and he saw Peter there, putting his nets together. He said, Peter, let me borrow your boat. And he started preaching from the boat. He put the disciples in a boat. And he said, I'm going up on the hillside and pray. But you go ahead and go to the other side. And I'll join you later. We're all in the same boat. Stop feeling down. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop feeling cheated. And know that we're all having problems. You think because I'm a preacher, because I'm the pastor here, that I don't have problems and things to deal with myself? But I do speak to things. Just like Jesus spoke to the fig tree. Just like the Bible said, speak to the mountain. have suffering, pain, and problem. Your life isn't the only one where you're having to deal with hurts and situations. But you don't get through this world without storm. You don't get through this life without struggles and pain. We all are in the same boat. We need to just come down and realize that if you're rich or poor, you're in the same boat. If you've got COVID and you're in a trailer park and you can't breathe, or if you're in a mansion and you've got COVID and you can't breathe, we're all in the same boat. It doesn't matter where you're rich or poor. It doesn't matter where you live in a big house or small house or what kind of car you drive. Pain is pain, Amen. but if you can't breathe, it doesn't matter where you lay your head. One person's got nurses attendants, and one has maids, but you still are dealing with the problem. The battle, the common human struggle as we go through this life. If you would have made me differently, I wouldn't have the pain that I've got now. But oh yes, you would. The circumstances might be different, but you're still going to have the problem because it rains on the just and the unjust of life. Single people said, if I could just get married, I'd be happy. Married people said, if I could just be single again, I would be happy. I want to be single. Skinny people say, if I could just put on some weight, I'd be happy. Fat people say, if I could just lose some weight, I'd be happy. Everybody's got struggles. Black folks got trouble. White folks got trouble. Democrats got struggles. Republicans have got struggles. Everybody. You didn't get through this world without struggles, without problems, without situations. There's no way that you're going to be able to get to the other side without the struggle, the battle that it takes to move from one side to the other. Somebody shout battle. battle. 
Battle. battle. Hallelujah. Battle. Battle. When you shout battle, you let the devil know that I'm going to fight back. Amen. I'm not going to let you run over me one more time. I'm going to stand on the word of God. I'm going to walk on the word of God, and I'm going to live the life that God intended for me to live. I'm not just going to let you take me under. That means if you jump on me, you got to fight on your hands, devil. Amen. And I know just how to fight you with the word of God. Amen. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen. Glory be to God but against principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. We have to learn to fight with the word of God and use our mouth. Amen. That means that I'm not going gentle into that good night. They battled on the boat. The text tells us that as they were fighting the battle on the boat, that Jesus comes walking on the water. And you know, Mark doesn't even mention the fact that Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water. I always thought that Peter was one that was probably a little more spiritual than some of the others because he was willing to fight at the drop of a hat and he would drop his own hat. He'd cut your ear off or he'd do whatever it took. He walked on the water. But there's no mention of him in Mark. Mark doesn't focus on Peter. He doesn't mention him at all. I've always applauded Peter for getting out of the boat. I thought, well... He's a little better than the rest of them, a little stronger in his faith. But they were toiling and fighting in the boat, and Peter got out of the boat and left them fighting in the boat, going through the storm. He asked Jesus, said, if that's you, bid me to come. And he got out of the boat and left everyone else struggling and fighting in the boat. I wonder if he was running from it, if he was a coward. I don't know. I look at Peter now and I don't know what to think. You know, Peter denied Christ three times before the cock crew. But I still like Peter. He did still walk on the water. He didn't have no more faith, I don't believe, than the others did that were fighting in the boat. But beginning to sink as he took his eyes off Jesus, said, save me. And Jesus reached down and took his hand and they had to both walk back to the boat. But with Jesus, he wouldn't have had to save him separately from the others if he had stayed in the boat till Jesus got there because it said when Jesus got on the boat it was immediately calm and the storm ceased and maybe we got too many people that's asking God to let us get out of the boat and miss the storm because God said we were going to go through situations, circumstances, problems. We were going to suffer. We have been instructed, or we should have been. You know, I love the old churches. We used to get in there and holler and run around and, and clap and have a big time and celebrate God. And, and But, you know, they never taught us how to deal with the pain and the suffering, but they did teach us how to abound but they didn't teach much on how to be abased. What happened to Peter's story in Mark? I don't know. But Mark didn't even bring it to the surface. Just keep jumping off the boat. 
trying to bypass the storm. But we learn more in the storm than we do in the good times. Sometimes you just need to sit your jaw. What the old folks used to say. Sit my hip. I'm going to wrestle and I'm going to make it. I've got the word of God on my side. I've got the promise of God on my side. I'm going to stay straight in the boat. It may be rocking and rolling, but I know it's going to the other side because Jesus said that it's going. Oh, ye of little faith. You know, Jesus kept telling the disciples, how long am I going to have to put up with you seeing all these miracles and you're capable of doing them too and I'll give you the power to do them and you're not doing any of them yourself. You know, later on they did. But he gave that same power to us. He said, all power has been given to me in heaven and earth, therefore you go into the world and make disciples. Peter missed the battle. But he had a habit of missing the battle. Jesus got to the cross and he missed the battle. He denied him. He was a disciple, he said. But he missed the battle and he ended up being ashamed and disgraced. But God welcomed him back in. He was forgiven. Amen. When we mess up, seek God's forgiveness. Are you a fighter? Are you going to let the devil run over you? Have you fought hard enough? Have you resisted under the blood long enough? He only talks about the boat. He only talks about the battle. And at last he mentioned, he brings up the bread. Now, if you read the story, you find out that right before he told them to go to the other side was when they had the 5,000 men, not to mention the women and children, that were out there in a revival. Mm. And they stayed a little too long and they got hungry. And the disciples wanted to send them away. You know, that's the way we are. We, we want to send them away. But God wants us to keep them a little bit longer. God wants us to see if we can provide something for them. So they bring Jesus the loaves and the fishes, and Jesus blessed them, and they set them down and groups of 50 and 100 and, and fed 5,000 men, not to mention the women and children. Now this was a miracle of great proportion in my mind because how in the world did they feed that bunch on what they had? If it wasn't a miracle, there's not a cow in Texas. That's what the cowboy said. So they fed them, and then they gathered up. They said, well, gather up the leftovers. And they were 12 baskets. I always thought that they gave those 12 baskets to the kids. But the disciples may have taken some of that with them as they was going on the boat and going to the other side. Yeah. You know, we just don't. Sometimes we have to really get down and think about what the Bible is telling us. But here it said they didn't consider the loaves. That was a miracle. They were in the storm. They could have spoke to the storm. And not had to continue through the storm. When you start going through a storm, you need to start speaking to the storm. But you're going through it. Are you a fighter? Glory be to God. The fragments, they were on the boat to remind them of what God had done in their life just moments before. The loaves, because 
They had forgot the loaves because of the hardening of their hearts. The loaves were there to remind them of what God had done for them in the past. Don't forget what God has done for you. My mind draws a picture. I never could have figured it out of who wanted leftovers anyway. You know, if, if I'd been with Jesus and been ministering with him for three years, I'd wanted fresh fish. <laughs> I'd have been like the ones arguing out there eating a the manna, Lord, I need some, I need some meat. <laughs> Remember the miracle of the fishes and the loaf. God left the fishes and the breads so that you could remember what you had been brought through. You could remember the miracles that you had witnessed. You could remember the miracles that had happened in your life. You could remember, you could remember the miracles that had taken place. God knew that the storm was coming in their life. I want you to leave the evidence in your life that when you needed it, It'll be there for you. Amen. You can see the evidence of what God has done for you. Somebody ought to be praising God right now. Amen. Somebody ought to be thanking God for what he's doing. Amen. The whole scope of life of what God has for us. Lord, we bless you this day. Yes. Lord, yes. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the struggles. We thank you for the battles. We thank you, Lord, for the lows, for the tests, for the trials, for everything that takes place in our life. God, we thank you for it. Because you said all things work together for good to them that love God, the called according to his purpose. Amen. You said greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You said we would be above and not beneath. You said we'd be restored, God. And we thank you today, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. And to God be the glory.